Well, let's go ahead because we don't want to be late for our guests. Let's get right into the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head on on to the, the drone newsroom. If he's still there and not frozen, it's Jeff Sills. All right, he's, he's moving. Cool. Okay. Cool. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> not going to not gonna work. Yeah, I, I need a drink of water, and this is definitely not vodka. <laughs> ah. That's your cue, Jeff. Yep. All right. So first in the news, we have uh, some video, video footage from El Paso County Search and Rescue who helped a hiker uh, get off of the summit of Pikes Peak on Tuesday. Of course. Uh of this course. guy got hold himself on. into a since, bad spot. Hold on. Since Wirecast uh, had to reset, it reset my uh, my uh, shot. So, here, oh, I'll no. just show you what I'm dealing with. This, this, okay, you can't see it. But anyway, uh, all right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. And you're going to see that for a minute. There's a little bit of the uh, behind the scenes inner workings. So, now I have to pick the freaking frackety frick. And I got to frick the frack. And that's not the frack. <laughs> And then we're going to go back over to the frick frack, and we have to frack the frickin' frick frack, and that's not it. So that's that's what I'm dealing with right there. And then we're going to frick the frack again, and f hopefully not frick the frack with the frack frick. Oh, please, for the love of all that's holy, please, I'm begging you. There we go! All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry. Hey, Todd Fox, $5 super chat. That does ease the sting of the... The glitches. It does. Just a little. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Cliff Rescue, you were talking about. Yeah. So, El Paso County Search and Rescue uh, in Colorado, they helped a hiker stuck on the summit of Pikes Peak. This video shows the rescuers rappelling down to the person uh, who got stuck in this crack on the side. Um, pretty unresting. Wow. Why would you put yourself in that situation? I, just, I don't understand people that climb these things. Crazy. Well, I mean, it's a hill, so if it's a hill, they're going to climb it. Um, they, I guess. Uh, this is them getting prepared, obviously, because the you know the the marathon season for Pikes Peak is coming up, <laughs> where they're going to have people climbing this mountain all the time. So, <laughs> hey, Joshua Bardwell. Sure, hey, baby, come on. Five dollars super chat. If I give you five dollars, can I come on your show? You can come on the show for free, my friend. <laughs> if you want to come on this. <laughs> what used to be a show until Wirecast destroyed it. Um, uh, Weston Nay, again, thank you. 99 cent super chat with a smiley face with sunglasses on it. Thanks, my friend. Thank you. All right, so next in the news, uh, MDU students uh, at Maharashi Dananamanana University what, I'm in sorry, India. I'm sorry, what is it again? <laughs> Maharashi. Sound it out. Maharashi. Yeah, uh, Maharashi. Dayanand University. D didn't didn't you uh, practice this before the the show? Didn't you practice this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I practiced it a lot. Well, now we don't want we don't want to seem insensitive to our uh, what is it? India. Yeah. India. Okay. What's the name of it again? <laughs> Maharashi Dan Dayanand University. Very good. Very good. That's close enough. About 2,500 of the female students at that uh, at that university stay in what they call varsity hostels, which are hotels or, I guess, uh, uh, dorms. The females have been complaining uh, for quite some time now that drones have been flying up and filming them in the windows. That takes quite a bit of ego to think that everybody wants to film you, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, not that I'm yeah. not on their side, but if somebody's actually doing that, that's wrong, of course. But come on. Everybody says yeah. that. When, you know, if you're at the beach and then uh, you you just fly a drone 200 feet over. Oh, he's filming me, not these other hundred ladies. It's me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know maybe, maybe I'm being <laughs> insensitive. Uh, the Grumpy well, Vlogger. I'm... Hey, Grumpy. $10 super chat for blood pressure meds or vodka. Yeah. Uh, you can vodka. tell. You could. I, I need not say anything. When my face gets red... Probably because of Wirecast. I hate you, Wirecast. But I love you. But I hate you. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> next we have our bonehead story of the week. The bonehead of the week, you say? Bonehead of the week. Oh, tell us about it. 
Uh, so the ISIS group uh, has made the news recently. The SAS uh, shared a story that was told to them. Uh, they're, of course, in uh, the Mosul area training Iraqi soldiers. And this story was shared with them uh, back during the Battle of Mosul. An ISIS terrorist decided to rig up an explosive on a phantom drone and fly it out toward, uh, I guess, allied troops. And in the process, I guess, misjudged the distance or, or something. And the battery warning came on and the drone returned to home. At, at which point it detonated over his head, killing the ISIS terrorist. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I... The first time that return to home was a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did return to home, didn't he? Yes. He did In an ethereal to sense. <laughs> and, that, and that's our bonehead of the week. Bonehead oh, of the week. week. Yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. Jimmy Green. Yeah. Jimmy Green sent us some green. $20 super chat. Thank you, Jimmy Green. Jimmy Green. You shouldn't that's have done that, one. Jimmy Green. You shouldn't have done that. Do it again, Jimmy Green. Do it again. One more time. One more time. One more time. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So the next story is, I guess, a really good story about a prepared photographer. Vic Moss uh, flies a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and as a professional photo photographer, he found uh, something interesting. Uh, he was told that the TFR around NFL stadiums is not in place or not active during NFL preseason games. And if you're new to the hobby, a TFR is a temporary flight restriction. Yes. Put in place by the um, FAA when there's events happening. And so basically what happened was is that he figured out that, that he could go out to uh, the Bronco Stadium and fly a drone legally near an NFL game. And so he did that. Yeah. Um, and as he was flying the drone, the security came out and told him to land his drone, and uh, he landed the drone. And after he explained to them the rules, and they had a very civil conversation while they were talking to the, I guess, next level of forces, he put the drone back up in the air because he was not breaking any rules. He was not breaking any laws. Right. And as he continued flying, then the security uh, contacted the FBI, and the FBI showed up. Oh, dear. Because this oh, is an God. NFL game. The FBI happens to be there. The FBI showed up. Wow. He then landed the drone again after, of course, getting all the footage that he wanted. And they had yet another civil conversation. Um, and the general gist of the whole thing was is that um, if he had called versus emailing them, that would have been one thing because obviously the stadium gets a lot of emails and they didn't see that he was, you know, had notified them he was going to come out and fly. Right. Uh, but second thing was is that the response that he had he didn't he wasn't argumentative with them he wasn't challenging when they asked him to land he landed when they understood that he wasn't breaking any rules he flew mm -hmm. um and it was it was all very civil uh the one takeaway from it that i think was most uh important was that the F the fbi explained to him that even though they can't supersede the faa's rules and regulations if they feel that he's doing something that is illegal, they can still confiscate the drone. And they do that on the basis of the reaction of the person that they're dealing with. So if you keep a cool head and you don't argue with them, then they're less likely to try to initiate what their rules would allow them to do. Right. And, um, and, and just to let everybody know, this was a preseason game, which yes. uh, didn't apparently trigger a TFR. But you can bet in the future that it will. <laughs> and uh, but. Yeah. But uh, he was lucky enough to get this shot, uh, among others, of the stadium. And I just think that is beautiful. Uh, the stadium oh, yes. could have hired him to do that. I mean, that's really good. That's a great shot. And well worth all the red tape that he had to go through to get it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you learn the rules. Understand uh, where you're flying from. Be prepared to be challenged and make sure that you keep a level head. As long as you're not argumentative, the people will usually not be argumentative with you. Right, and usually it's you, the drone pilot, that's gonna know more about the laws and regulations than any of the authorities. Yes. Don't be a weenie about it, just do what they say, because they're the ones with guns and handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Woo. So. So last week we talked about the FAA putting a warning up about weaponizing your drones. And 
a lot of, uh, I guess, suspicion was that this was caused because of the people that had set uh, fireworks on their drones. Right. And after some, I guess, digging around, that wasn't the reason why the no? FAA. No. What the was it, Jeff? Out. <laughs> the FAA put the warning up because the company developed a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, my, oh my Christmas God. present, man. You mean I'm not going to be able to get this for Christmas? I want this Santa! Introducing the TF-19 Wasp Drone Flamethrower. Wow. The Wasp is built to withstand all sorts of conditions, yeah! both cold and hot. With 25 feet of range, oh my one God. gallon of fuel capacity, the TF-19 Wasp can deliver over a minute and a half of continuous wow. firing time. <laughs> oh my god! Designed too much to reach new heights, it wields an array of utility for professional users who demand tools that exceed expectations. I demand tools that ex exceed expectations. Now, now this thing is really cool, but it's made for other countries, I believe. Isn't that right? Because other countries... <laughs> actually use this type of technology to remove uh, garbage from their high tension lines. Yeah, yeah, it, yes. it's essentially a tool. But the thing that's interesting about it is that within the United States currently, right now, you can legally own a flamethrower. It's not against the law for you to purchase and own a flamethrower. Um, but what's interesting is, is that it is illegal, apparently, to put that flamethrower on a drone. So that's considered weaponizing it. Right. You you can yeah you can own a a, a chainsaw, and you can own a a big wheel. Just don't put a chainsaw on your big wheel. <laughs> I mean legally, I guess you could. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Did you have a big wheel when you were a kid? Oh yeah, exactly. I did. Jerry, sure. did you have a big wheel? Absolutely. I modified mine. I did all kinds of crap to it. It was it was crazy. Do they even make big wheels anymore? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. They've they've changed the way they look though. A lot of them they're not the same yeah. old big wheel we had. Man, yeah, you, you pull that handbrake, you you spin out, <laughs> and I always got a flat <laughs> spot in the wheel, eventually because I'd hit the brakes and skid, you know. So it was like. Dugum, yeah. dugum, dugum, dugum. <laughs> anyway, all right. No, no, no. I I wanted the green machine where you could lean back. And oh then rock yes, arms. the green machine. That was yeah. all. I mean, that's what them rich people got the green machine. You know, a rich kid came in the neighborhood. He had a green machine. Yeah, those things. That's were for awesome. sure. Let me know. Right, if, so let cool. me know in the chat if you if you if you had a big wheel. <laughs> I could get that thing on two wheels off the curb. You can still buy a green machine just to let you know, Kent, in case I, you want to get one. I think they make an adult size big wheel somewhere. I think they do. Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next in the news, FAA also introduced, uh, I guess, an email that just came out today. So this will be, I guess, appearing in your mailboxes soon. Uh, they have published NOTAM FTC. 97752, which will allow for intermittent airspace restrictions of drones at select federal facilities nationwide. Uh, this goes effective September 1st in 2019. Um, this is, I guess, to give advance warning indicating sites where airspace restrictions are going to start coming up intermittently. Um, and they're going to come up 24 hours ahead of the restriction going into effect. So You'll see the, the temporary flight restriction appear, and then it'll go active within 24 hours. If you need help trying to understand where these things are going to pop up and the term of, I guess, the time that they're going to be on, the FAA has a UAS data tool that you can go to that shows you on the FAA website uh, an interactive map of where these uh, restrictions are, and you can get information off of that, that map. So. Uh, keep an eye out for that email. Look for that information. It would be valuable to you guys uh, as you get closer to flying this summer. Very good. Next year. Very good. All right. So next in the news, Skydio uh, has given us yet another glimpse into the Skydio 2. They introduced some more footage uh, showing what this new drone is capable of doing. And this time they focused on what they called complex shots. So this was some really great wow. stuff. Wow. Do, have we seen what the drone itself looks like? I think we did, didn't we? It kind of looks... Just the shadow. Kind of looks like a Mavic shape. Yeah. yeah hmm. It's definitely got that, that small Mavic style with the with the traditional X frame. So far I'm, different than the Skydio one. I'm glad that the Skydio keeps improving because the, the first one was very impressive and this will no doubt exceed that. Yeah, Look if this does it. half of what they say that it'll do, it's going to be a big game changer in the drone industry. 
All right, so uh, this is a story that comes out of the Gaza Strip in Israel. Um, and this is an area, of course, it's always hotly contested. But uh, the Hamas group for years have been sending what they call fire kites uh, into Israel. And these things are very uh, damaging. They can they can land and, and set fire to acres of land and buildings, etc. Yeah. So... One of the groups uh, in Israel uh, happened to notice that if they flew their FPV race drone along uh, the course of these fire kites, that they could take them out, essentially. And oh. so now there is a niche racing sport uh, developing in Israel promoting skilled racing drone pilots to essentially fly around and knock kites out of the sky. So what, wow. what do they do? They grab the st string or they just physically bump into the kite itself or because if you get in the and, string that's going to crash the both of them my my guess is that it's probably just colliding with the string uh and and cutting it they probably use you know they probably sharpen the blades or something it basically oh yeah the, oh my god can you imagine putting <coughs> like uh, like metal props on an fpv oh. drone and sharpening them razor sharp wow. wow wow that is not one for hand catching no <laughs> so see, see, pay close attention, guys. You're going to see a huge group you only do it of once. FPV <laughs> pilots develop in Israel. <laughs> yeah, wow, what a great idea, though. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of FPV drones, uh, also this week, an absolutely fabulous video showed up on the Internet. Uh, a professional dra drone racer called Shaggy FPV uh, filmed himself plunging straight down a set of Norwegian waterfalls. It was amazing footage yeah it's incredible i'm watching it right now wow you could see the the rainbow in there boy i'd love to share that with you but uh he he licensed it to viral hog now when jeff told me about this he sent me the link to the video and i was like amazing i want to share it with everybody well i emailed shaggy and he was nice enough to contact me back and he said thanks for the interest but i did license it to viral hog um, and he said, maybe some of my other videos you could share sometime. And mm. I invited him to be on the show sometime. But, uh, yeah, Viral Hog kind of ruins YouTube a little bit as far as videos going viral. Because, there, I don't know, I, I feel pretty strongly about it. You, you remember the guy we had on last week? Yes. Uh, with, with the, he just happened to be filming when the whole side of the, the um, mountain went down. Yeah, the iceberg. Yeah, the yeah, the cliff, the cliff. It fell. Uh, the kayakers. Well, Viral Hog contacted him, and he said, "No, I don't want to do it." And they claimed that video anyway. So when uh, I yeah, when I posted uh, last week's Thursday Night Live with that video in it, Viral Hog claimed it, even though they didn't own it. They just assumed before. They got his permission that he would say yes because everybody says yes to viral hog. I got some free viral hog. Uh, yeah. So I had to dispute it through YouTube, and they released it, of course, because they had no hold on it. But just a warning to people: if you happen to film a UFO landing or a, a unicorn crossing the interstate or anything else that would be uh, interesting that would go viral, I would hang on to that yourself and don't be swayed by companies like viral hog because they'll take it from you and what's going on there jerry what Nothing. i can't see your picture anymore for some reason it's not there oh. You're gone. well that's kind of important i see jeff i just don't see you has it been that way the whole time uh since we came back on yeah well i can fix that oh you just had to good. remind me i didn't remember i mean no, I didn't that's, know. A, I didn't that's a, it's you. not your fault man it's not your fault. I didn't want to interrupt. I was like, oh, crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again. You know what? I'm going to – you know what? This is this is important. So I'm going to put you – I'm going to put everybody on hold. Okay. Please hold. Your viewership is important to us. <laughs> so I'm going to hang up with these dudes and call them right back because Wirecast. Thanks, Wirecast. Somehow, Greg Kuhnert will find a way to let Wirecast see this. And I, I just want to let you guys know that I love Wirecast when it's working. So, hey, 
How about if we keep it working all the time? What do you say about that? Is that a good idea there, Wirecast? What do you think about that? It's a good idea there, buddies. So anyway, and now we're back with <laughs> half the show, or a third, and now we're going to call Jerry back, and I know I'm going to get a copyright hit on uh, Chuck Mangione. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, the, what's crazy is uh, on that viral hog thing, the company or the website that I got the original story from, which is the dig site that, that posted it originally, yeah. they are not allowed to show the video anymore. If you go to actually back to the news uh, page where I found the original story, it's it says, oops, not video not available. So it it's kind of sad that that amazing footage doesn't get I mean, the, the doesn't get the exposure, and it, and, and you yeah. know, whatever money he's going to make from viral, viral hog isn't worth to me anyway. It might have been to him, but uh, isn't worth the the exposure and the the goodwill you could have gotten by just letting it be out there. Anyway, send it yeah. send it to us, man. We'll put it all over the place. Oh, it'll be everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So next in the news, uh, they got some drone footage from Hong Kong recently. Uh, the Hong Kong people have created a human chain to mark the 30th anniversary of what they called the Baltic change. Um, back during the 1989 uh, protests against Soviet rule in the Baltic, they created a human chain that had two million people as part of uh, Hong Kong's bid to try to uh, stop a lot of the violence and issues that are going on there. They duplicated this on the 30th anniversary and got this amazing footage uh, wow. from the air. Hong Kong is a beautiful city, Man. and what a great idea with the lights on the mountain and everything. Yeah, they they completely encircled the city. It was an amazing event. Awesome, That's crazy. Mm. All right. So, uh, uh, next... but by the way, just uh, very quickly, I I apologize to uh, <laughs> Joshua Barkwell. I I told him a certain time, and and uh, we're we're probably going to be a couple minutes late. So uh, thanks for hanging out. We're, we'll call you here in a minute. Um, Everybody else in the chat, good, we good. You can see me, you can hear me, you can, every, we're good? Okay, good. And uh, Oz by Drone Greg says, I already wrote to Wirecast telling them to watch this show. <laughs> Thanks, Wirecast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so next in the news, we have some drone footage uh, that shows some of the damage that's currently going on with the Amazon rainforest. They've had uh, a huge wow. series of wildfires out there that have been scorching uh, the forest. Um, in the last year, they've had something like 72,000 individual fires uh, on record. And the, the, the footage here shows a lot of the devastation that these things are causing. It's, it's really sort of sad to see all this, but uh, hopefully they uh, can get to the point where these fires will diminish. Right. And, and you may be thinking to yourself, ah, that doesn't concern me. That's uh, it's a world away. Well, uh, you're breathing that forest. We get, yeah. The world gets a majority of its fresh air from those trees. Yeah. So when they burn up, that's, you know, less breathing for us. It's a shame. Sad. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to end this on a, on a more upbeat note. Uh, my favorite company, Bell Helicopter, has decided they're going to jump into the multi-copter multi UAV environment, and they have generated Ooh. this fantastic device. What is that? Whoa! Yeah. This is known as the APT-70. It's a six by nine foot vehicle that has a range of 19 miles and can transport 70 pounds. This is Bell's entry into package delivery and transport for medical supplies and food. And oh. I can tell you right now, Amazon is very jealous of this device. Wow. Yeah, Amazon's uh, aerial device doesn't look as cool as this. No. <laughs> Now, this thing has a, a incre increased capacity, increased range, um, and of course, it's made by a company that has a lineage in vertical takeoff and landing. So, wow. we look forward to see what this one does. That looks like it could lift that dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty big. I bet you could throw a toddler on there and it would take it away, wouldn't it? 70 yeah. pounds. In fact, yeah. we could, can we put all the toddlers on it? <laughs> I'm not a fan go. of toddlers. Now, yeah. your toddler. Now, you, you watching, your toddler, love your toddler. It's everybody else's. Yeah. The, the ones I see at Walmart. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for your, your patience and your, your, oh. great, uh, your great news. 
Yeah. Uh, I know there was I some. I want to say a special shout out and thank you to uh, gr- the Grunt Style guys for this fantastic Game of Drones t shirt. I love this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It matches so, the hat. Look at that hat. That's a great hat. That's a great it's hat. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the, the, game of, uh, the Game of Drones, that's a, that's a take on the on the show. What, 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 what Thrones, show? Yeah. Game, of, Game of Thrones. My favorite character is uh, that kid who ended up at, I know there's spoiler, the kid who ended up being the king, right? Oh, yeah. Remember him? And uh, what he would do, he could, he could like teleport, like his sight, he could drone through, uh, what, are the, what are those, um, he, could, he could see through the eyes of the, what are those creatures? What, dragons? What, no, not the, not the oh, dragons. The what, what, what was it, what was it, Jeff? <laughs> you thought you were going to get away with it. Just minutes away. Just minutes away. <laughs> Jeff, just, just try. We love you. We mean it. That's a cool shirt. Thanks so much, man. Thank you very much. Oh. Check out Drone Book for the news that did not make the cut today. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. Oh, gotta love that Jeff. He's the best, isn't he? He is. And now here is Jerry Calverly with a joke. I got a joke. And whatever echo is causing that, uh, please make it stop. <laughs> 